I went on Amazon the other day and I bought me one of these. What is it? It's the Shuttle Pro 2 from Contour. It's an editing tool that allows you to quickly and more effectively edit your video. At least I thought I was gonna use it for video, but when I got it, I found that it was far more useful for a variety of other editing applications, which I will share with you today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? Now I bought me my Shuttle Pro 2 on Amazon because I was starting to do a lot more video editing and playing around a lot, especially with Final Cut Pro and I thought I was gonna become a video editing meister and this tool looked like just the thing to help me get over the hump and become a more efficient video editor. Uh, but I ended up still editing my videos the old fashioned way for the most part because I don't do really fancy editing if the truth be known, at least when I edit myself. But I did find that it was incredibly useful as I started to produce my own podcast and I started editing the audio in my podcast. And I found that the tools that were built, that, that it gave me, uh, made my podcast editing a dream. And as I explored that aspect of it, I discovered all sorts of other ways that you could use a tool like this to become a far more effective editor in almost all of our applications. So let's have a quick look. And I'll start with where I ended up actually using it a lot which is working with my podcast. Now, the tool itself is designed for, it's just a series of quick keys. It's a keyboard replacement tool, really what it is. It's got a series of buttons that you can assign different keystrokes to so that your hand rests on the contour shuttle while you're working away and you're using these keys uh, instead of going to the keyboard and hitting a variety of different shortcuts. Now, the magic of it, of course, is it's got this, this dual shuttle area where you can scroll back and forth and moving forward and backwards on a timeline line in video or in audio, that's really effective. But that can also be used for zooming in for other applications because each one of the keys on the shuttle is programmable and you program them all using this tool here which installs as a kind of a keyboard extension on your computer there's the shuttle settings and you can see that we will go through this we'll go through this in a few minutes but there's just a bewildering array of different applications that it works for but let me show you how i use it in my editing now i use a tool called hindenburg journalist pro as my audio editing tool but it works very similar to almost any any audit any audio editing package so you see here here's my latest podcast that I'm working on and you can see the waveform of all of my uh, of all of my talk here but let's say typically speaking when I'm editing my podcast uh, the biggest thing that I do is I trim out little nasty bits from the podcast like trim out me clearing my throat or me saying um or me stutter 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 stuttering uh, I go through as I listen to it and I clear out all of the different little mistakes and if I have a guest on then I also clear out any uh, any background noise like if I talk over top of them I'll trim that sort of content out and so as we take a look here through the podcast this is probably here this is probably a breath I, I, I get to recognize the waveform as we go so let's just have a quick listen here to what I said right here so what I'm doing is I'm just putting my insert clicking down with my insertion point with my eye beam here using my mouse because I use a combination I have one hand on mouse and one hand on contour shuttle as I'm editing and I hit the, the there's a, a button on the shuttle that I use as the play and stop button which is the thumb button that I use it so often so I hit that and we listen together and that and you did you heard the little breath and the little intake of breath so let's say that I wanted to remove that breath sound I'll use my eye beam and I'll just highlight the breath sound and then on the contour shuttle I have programmed a keyboard shortcut for the ripple delete where it deletes the uh, deletes a little bit of media and then moves everything down in the track so watch I'll hit that button and it deletes it and then I've got another button which is cue it forward two seconds and then play so I can listen to make sure that I did the edit correctly Act together and that all works to and that's how I go about editing. Now I have other uh, buttons programmed to delete, but not move the audio track down. So that's if like it's a, if it's a interview and I have started to interject, but my guest keeps going and I want to remove that interjection, but I don't want to change the relationship, the timeline between the two tracks. It will just delete that content. Uh, and we can, I can basically do anything that I'm going to do on the keyboard. I can program on the shuttle. Now, how this all comes together, let me show you the tool. Let's go back into the, the programming for the tool, the, uh, the utility for the tool itself, and give you an idea of just how flexible it is. 
when you install the Shuttle Pro 2, and there's th three different versions that they have, the Shuttle Pro and the Shuttle Express, which are all different price points and kind of different feature sets. When you take a look at that, they've got this set of global settings, and then they've got all of these different apps that it has presets for. So what they've done is they've shipped us templates that have all of the different keyboard shortcuts that they think you want to use if you're using that tool pre-programmed in. But it's completely editable. You can change it to whatever works best for you. So as I take a look for all applications, it's just kind of a global aspect. If you click on down here on any of these tools, it shows you the, uh, the key that you were talking about. So in this case here, it's this little key over here in the wing, and it says it does nothing. But if you want to program that tool to do anything, program that button to do anything, you just go down here and you can basically build a tiny little macro that's going to define what that keyboard shortcut will do for you or what that key will do, the keyboard shortcut that it will replace. And you can set it up for multiple keystrokes, modifier keys, you can even have it run as a little macro if you want. So you can choose all of those different features. And let's take a look at some of the, so it, it's essentially completely flexible for you to create any series of keyboard shortcuts you want, and then you can save them. Now, when you install it, it also installs, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, a completely different array of pre-built tools for you based on the application. It's an application aware, so it recognizes what application you're in. So for example, if you are in the Apple world and you are gonna be using GarageBand 10, you click here, which is an audio editing tool, and here is all of the editing features for that audio tool. And you can see that, we, and you can actually, if you just use any of the, um, if you actually use the Contour Shuttle and just press on anything, it will tell you what that key does. This, this one here is play, pause, button nine. It shows you what button nine is, button eight, Let's see what button eight does. Button eight does record, stop record. Button seven does uh, mute and unmute the selected track. So you will get to know all of the different things that it does by rote as you use it more and more often. And of course we can edit these at any point. Now learning to use it is a little bit of a, uh, it's a little bit trial and error, but you can actually pry off the little key, uh, the, the little button keys and put in notifications, put in little labels that will let you know exactly what button does what, but you'll get to know them pretty quickly as you use it because it's all through re repetition. And the more you use it, the more you're gonna understand how well it works. But let's go on and take a look at some of the other things because I thought about it as a video and audio editing tool. I didn't think about using it for many other things. And here we see Hindenburg Journalist, the tool that I use for audio in the audio mix. And take a look at all of the presets that it has as far as audio goes. It's got pretty much all of the different audio editors that Mac users like to use. It's got CAD tools in Autodesk, uh, a complete set just for Avid. It also has a complete set just for Adobe. Did I go through the Adobe set? Oh, yes, here it is. The, look at all of the Adobe tools, all for all of Adobe Audition, Dreamweaver, Illustrator, InDesign, Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere, Premiere Pro, all of the different versions. It's got presets set for all of those different versions of Adobe. It's a, it's a huge tool for the Adobe community. But going down, here's something that I want you to think about because as I say, it does more than just Obviously, in, in the Adobe world with Photoshop and stuff, it does more than just audio and video. Uh, but even down in the productivity world, it has you have shortcuts. If you're a PowerPoint user and you're always building tons and tons of PowerPoint slides, you have here things like duplicating slides and inserting slides and going to the end of a slideshow uh, and all of those sort of features all built in. So that's it. It is a. Uh, I've got links below to uh, to the my Amazon links to my Amazon store for the Shuttle Pro. Uh, it's a tool that does way more than I initially imagined. In fact, what I bought it for, I don't end up using it for at all now. I bought it to edit video, and I don't end up using it for video. Although if I was a power ed video editor, I think I would use a lot. Now there are some comparable products that you can think about it, and one of the products that people talk to me an awful lot about is a tool for live streaming called the Elgato Stream Deck, which allows you to insert live content 
into a live stream. So having bumpers or, or little inserts or graphics that you overlay when you're doing a live stream or when you're doing video, live video production. This is a really nice tool for putting different pieces into your live stream as you're presenting it. Well, as I looked at the, what this tool here does, and this one is $149 and it's got 15 keys uh, to, to basically replicate keyboard shortcuts. I realized that the Stream Deck, if I chose to use it this way, would do the exact same thing for me. Now, it doesn't have the nice labeling to make it easy for me to recognize what each and every one of those keyboard shortcuts is, uh, but you've got the same basic functionality built in to the Shuttle Pro V2. It's just in a different wrapper. It's just in a different type of package. So you can do some of the same things. Links below, love to hear how you're using it. If you're using it in a different creative way, let me know in the comments whether or not you use a, a, a keyboard shortcut replacement tool such as the Elgato Stream Deck or the Shuttle Pro 2. I hope you found today's video to be valuable. Make sure that you have subscribed to our channel. Ring that notification bell so that you get notified when we upload any new videos here at Dotto Tech. Till next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>